What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Vincent Esposito and today we're going to be talking about how to naturally lower cholesterol. So this is a huge, huge topic here, especially in the United States. So I'm very happy we're getting to cover it now. But before we get to it, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel below. Again, coming out with videos every week, health, wellness, nutrition, plant-based recipes, gut health, find that all here. And without further ado, let's get to the video. So turns out the number one risk factor for heart attacks is cholesterol, specifically high cholesterol. Now high cholesterol is defined as over 200, but what makes this tricky is that 35% of all heart attacks actually happen below the 200 milligrams per deciliter threshold. So this makes it very confusing because then does cholesterol matter? Why is this an issue? Well, yes it is, and we're gonna go through that right now. So it's estimated that half of the adults in the Western world have high cholesterol levels. So the question is, what can you do to lower your cholesterol levels? And the good thing is you can actually do it in your own home, in your kitchen. And we'll kind of go over the basics of that today. So generally, as I mentioned before, the higher your cholesterol levels, the more likely you will be to get a heart attack. Now, just for reference ranges here, Ideally, your total cholesterol levels should be under 150 and your LDL cholesterol, which is considered the bad cholesterol, should be under 75. But before we get into how to do it quickly, um, I wanna talk about why cholesterol is important and why having zero cholesterol or no cholesterol would not be a good thing either. So cholesterol is important for maintaining a cell's rigid rigidity and stability. So it actually helps kind of stiffen up our cell membranes, which is needed to an extent. Now, obviously, if there's too much, it could lead to hardened membranes, and this becomes a problem as well. So it's about finding that balance. Cholesterol is needed for the production of sex hormones and other hormones, so it's really important that if we have zero cholesterol, this isn't gonna be good either. Cholesterol is needed to produce bile, and bile is needed to help emulsify fats and increase the pH of the kind that leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine to go through the rest of the digestive process. Cholesterol is also needed in certain amounts to help maintain gut health and decrease the chances of intestinal permeability or otherwise known as leaky gut. And one other thing I wanna to touch on is cholesterol is often seen as the cause of the major killers today. So again, things like heart attacks, diabetes, weight gain even. But just because cholesterol levels are high does not necessarily mean that it is specifically causing the issue. There's an association, not a causation. So it's really important to kind of get that in line. So interestingly, cholesterol levels tend to rise as part of the mechanism for our body to protect itself. So when cholesterol gets high, it's actually a sign that the body's trying to undergo some sort of process that includes immune system function and detoxification. So contrary to popular belief, cholesterol is actually needed to aid in the removal of free radicals. And we've talked about free radicals a bunch in liver detox, liver health, and obviously immune system function. So cholesterol levels get high actually when there are high amounts of free radicals present, high amounts of, again, these compounds that can cause a lot of cellular damage. So again, it's not necessarily the cholesterol itself causing the problem, but it tends to get high when there are other things going on. So just wanna make that kind of clarification. So the question becomes, how do we lower cholesterol to a level that is ideal so we can maintain optimal health or get to optimal health going forward for the rest of our life? So believe it or not, we could actually lower our cholesterol levels by simply changing our diet, modifying what we eat. And we could break this down into three separate categories in terms of what foods might raise cholesterol levels. So generally, they're gonna be cholesterol-containing foods, foods high in saturated fats, and foods high in trans fats. So even though most of the cholesterol in our body is actually made, and in fact, the, the estimate's about 90% or so, you still can get cholesterol from foods, and this is generally simple to identify. Animal foods tend to have cholesterol, whereas plant foods do not have any cholesterol whatsoever. So very easy if we're looking to kind of eliminate cholesterol, at least from our diet. So again, focusing on more plant foods will help lower your cholesterol level a little bit. The other two here are bigger drivers. So it's gonna be saturated fat and trans fats. So in fact, consuming more saturated fat 
increases cholesterol levels more than consuming cholesterol itself. And again, this goes back to the idea of cholesterol rising in the body when we're exposed to more inflammatory markers and saturated fat from this sense would tend to be more inflammatory than consuming cholesterol if you can isolate them. So a lot of your meat and dairy are higher in saturated fats. However, there are plant-based sources. So things like coconut oil are very high in saturated fats. So if you, even if you want coconut oil, don't go throwing it in your coffee. Um, use it in very small amounts sparingly if you need to, or use other better options like olive oil. Trans fats, although they've kind of been banned in, uh, in a certain way, um, technically we're still, our companies are still allowed to round down to zero. So essentially if something has less than a half gram of trans fats per serving, you can actually round down to zero. So even though something on the label might say zero trans fats, it might actually have a little bit per serving. So things high in trans fats are things like your processed foods, your junk foods, your margarine, fried foods, certain uh, vegetable oils and other oils, butter, junk foods, and commercially baked goods. They, these all can have trans fats. So the question becomes, what do we replace this with? And I kind of hinted to it earlier, but all these plant foods, so your fruits, veggies, your nuts, legumes, seeds, even cereal grains, these are very low or contain no cholesterol at all, and are also very low in saturated and trans fats naturally. So the question becomes then how much do we replace? Now, if you've been on this channel before, you know that I make obviously a lot of plant-based foods, and while I am not 100% vegan, I do lie somewhere I'd say between 90 and 95% plant-based. Um, and the reason being is that based on the evidence out there, this seems to be the way that our bodies can function optimally. Now, do you have to get to that point yourself? Well, it's a sliding scale. So it seems to be the more plants you tend to incorporate, the better you seem to do. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go 100% vegan, but if you start moving in a more plant-based direction, this will help in lowering your cholesterol levels. And again, this is based on the research I've gone over generally. So if you don't believe me, you can look for someone else or what I encourage everyone to do is to at least try it. Try it for a few weeks, try it for a few months and get tested before and get tested after and see what happens. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you're not gonna know unless you try something, but if you don't try anything, how do you expect anything to change? And in terms of making some simple changes, you could replace you know, your chicken or your beef with things like lentils or chickpeas or black beans. Uh, all different types of legumes are all good for that when it comes to protein sources. Instead of maybe butter on your toast, you can try avocado, you can try hummus, you can try tahini, all great plant-based sources of healthier fats. So I hope that gives you some ideas. Again, we have some other recipes on this channel. So feel free to take a look at those if you need some inspiration. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. So again, super simple to do. Again, these are kind of simple changes. While it might seem hard, I always suggest starting slow and kind of building on it each few days, each week to really start stacking little wins so you can get to your ultimate goal. And again, like we can lower our cholesterol levels if we start making some sort of shifts in what we're eating and will improve our health and our overall well-being going forward. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe below. Coming out videos every week, nutrition, plant-based recipes, health, wellness, longevity tips, um, gut health, you can find that all here. If you have any questions or you wanna you know, check me on anything I've said, let's have a com uh, conversation below in the comments. Happy to answer any questions. Love to see, you know, what you guys think and if there's anything else I can help you with. So I'll see you down there. And until then, take care, everyone, and see you next time.